Hi everyone, this is Pierrick from P2 Design. In this little tutorial, I'd like to show you a way to create a controller for your HDRI. This is a topic that was already covered by other uh, tutorials editor, like Andrew Pricey, who has made the very first one. But for me, it wasn't really accurate, mainly because it was using the current HDRI to be multiplied onto itself. So you don't really have control onto the values of the HDRI. For this tutorial, I will be using HDR from HDRI Evan, led by Greg Zal. He did and he's doing an awesome job, really, uh, sharing for free uh, those very high quality HDRI is invaluable. HDRI are really pricey on the internet and these are really qualitative. So I do encourage you to go onto his website and add it to your favorite. And if you enjoy his work, uh, just donate or be a Patreon for him. My goal will be to create a node that will allow us to control on a certain threshold of light, the value of the lightning of any source of light, meaning that Whenever you have uh, a very strong HDRI, you will be able to clump it. And whenever you have low quality HDRI, you will be able to multiply uh, the light power without having to separate light rays as to avoid problems onto refraction and both diffuse, which wasn't done before. I have set a little scene and then I've been using nodes for the world uh, shading into cycles, I press Ctrl T and loaded my HDR from HDRI Evan. I've also made a shadow catcher on the plane on the ground, enabling shadow catcher and disabling every other stuff. To betterly understand the process, let's first do our uh, node setting into the compositing. So I've opened the picture in the UV image editor. And when I click it, you can see the values of the pixel on the bottom of the UV image editor. And we can see that most of the values are going from zero to one, but as soon as I click on the source of light, it can get up to infinity. In this case, it's 300,000, which is huge. And this is one of the big values from HDRI Aven picture is that they are not clipped. So what if I want to clump this value? Because in certain case, your picture might look a bit overexposed or you just want to have control upon it. So the first thing we need to do is to currently clump the wall image. And whenever you use a mix RGB, you have this option. So let's add a mix RGB, enable clamp, and mix it with white at zero. Now when I click my picture, I can see that the sun is clamped to one. As we'll be working on values, we may end up with a black and white picture. So we first need to separate the RGB so that we can work on individual values and then recombine them and output a colored picture. So the first thing I want to do is know the maximum of my picture. So create a threshold. In this case, we'll be able to separate all pixels that are above one in value from those that are beneath one or whatever value we want to use as a threshold. To do so, I'm using a math node set to maximum and then I will plug in into the second socket a single value for all those nodes. Then if we want to get rid of those pixels that are beneath one or beneath the input value, we just need to subtract the same value to the result. So we use a subtract node and then re-input our previous value, our very first value that will be our clump value. To keep my nodes as clean as possible, I'm using this little reroute that allow you 
to uh, plug any value and redirect it wherever you want. So it allows you to organize better your nodes. So let's combine everything again with a converter, combine RGB to see what we have now. With a threshold value of 0 0.5, I will only see all pixels with a value above 0 0.5, here with 0, my original picture, and here with 1, all pixels that have a value above 1. So I can easily isolate light sources this way. Now the idea is just to add a new math node set to minimum this time, so that we'll be able to set a threshold value for the higher pixel. And whatever value we will input here will be our maximum value for this pixel. So I, w I have been a bit struggling with those uh, minimum and maximum nodes uh, because I made this during uh, a tutoring session last week. And so I had to experiment before I get comfortable explaining how it does work. So currently you just have to check minimum, maximum and test it and see what's output it. So now that we are able to isolate our highlight from our picture, we just have to add them onto the clumped picture and we'll get exactly the same result as the base HDRI as soon as our clump value here is set to the same value. So if I set it to uh, 300,000 or so, I don't remember exactly, I would get exactly the same HDRI as before. But if I enter a lower value, I will be able to clump my HDRI. So the only thing then that is missing is if we want to push up the value of the light. So on those quality HDRI, it's not necessary, but if you have clipped HDRI with um, a weaker light source, that could be cool to be able to crank this up. So as we are dealing with very high values, here I just add a power of two onto my input so that whenever I enter 100, I get a result of 10,000, for example. So then we can add our multiply node here and input a new value that will be kind of a factor that will allow us to multiply the light source power. Uh, so in this case, we won't be using it. It will be kept to one, but if you have a, an HDRI with like the highest value is only 10 or maybe 20 or maybe 100, a pretty limited value, this will allow you to crank it up. So we can see that we have our 100 value multiplied by 3 and added to our 1 value of the sun and we get a 301 value for our sun. So now back into the node editor for the word material, we just have to reproduce this chain. So first use the clumping, then separate RGB, then set the maximum, subtract the same value, then set the minimum, and finally add a multiply. And for the minimum output, we can use a power of two to make it uh, more progressive into our preview. Then to be able to compare our original HDRI with our newly created node, I just need to know the value of 3547 power 2. So if I set this value for my clamping, I should have exactly the same result. And if we were using a bad quality HDRI with a clipped value, we can use the multiply option to increase our source light power. And you can see here with a, a clipped value at 4, I can have a pretty decent lighting with uh, not that much influence onto the reflection. 
and without separating them so that whatever kind of shader we are using they are all lighted with the same source of light and we don't need to filter our HDRI per shader like glossy rays, diffuse rays, etc. So now we can group everything and I will just replug my different values and give them a relevant name. Also have a single input for the picture. Our first socket will be the threshold, so the values we want to isolate in this case by default over one then we need our clamping that allow us to set the maximum value for our source of light and finally a factor if we want to multiply or increase our light source then pressing tab you will get out of this grouping node and we can give it a name and you can save it into a separate file and when you need to use it, you can append it into your scene. Or you can create a fake user by clicking the little F button here so that if it isn't used, it won't be erased by Blender when restarting the file. And you can then add it to your startup file. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoy it. Don't hesitate to go on to HDRI Haven and give a few bucks to Greg Zal, he really deserves them. And also, uh, if you want to learn a lot of things, uh, go on to Blender Guru. Andrew Pricey is very well known because he does very good tutorials. I'll see you on the next one.